um, I ran myself into a question, a conundrum yesterday, which I hadn't anticipated, um, which was that, um, let's say that when we elect in our democracy, when we elect Donald Trump or Kamala Harris, presumably the other side, the, the, the side that loses or is willing to acknowledge that it's lost, goes into some sort of abeyance. That seems to be what, what's been been uh, uh, been mooted. And, and I don't know that we do. We keep living. I, I kept living during, during um, the Trump years. Um, I, I had was very distressed um, in, on behalf of other people. But look at me, I'm a white man. So I, I was the least least put upon. Um, but basically, I guess what I'm saying is that, it, is that if a Jill Stein or a Bernie Sanders comes in, Jill Stein probably more than, than, than the other, you're dealing with, you're dealing with a proposition that is a, that is a, a massive change, um, which seems to me to be one that is essentially critical of the American empire in, in how it's put together, in how it continues to behave internationally and, and domestically. And the other two parties which say, we have variations on American empire. We don't, we don't, um, we don't challenge its essentials, its capitalism, its support for, for, um, who we imagine to be our, our cousins in righteousness around the world and, and, and to demonize and to uh, sanction against and to make war against the evil empire. That, that's essentially, um, in my lifetime, that's been America's, or my conscious lifetime, let's say, that has become the thing. So uh, I'm just putting this out there, I'm not, I'm not choosing either side really, <clears throat> except to say that, that um, Jill Stein, Bernie Sanders, as was, would have been evident in the debate, if Jill had been, had been brought into the debate between Kamala and Trump, you would have been looking at two, not three. You would have been looking at, um, the cheerleaders for and the propagators of, and you know, Trump's, Trump's empire is kind of mythical, make America great again. Um, um, at least, uh, at least um, um, the Democrat one is, is contemporary. Um, so you'd be, you'd have this problem of having, having people vote to do what? to become a different nation, um, which might be a good idea. I'm not saying, I'm not saying even that I, you know, because I continue to exist. I live how, how I do in the way that I do in, in this country with its freedoms and with its, with its proscriptions and with its, um, um, and I'm not likely to get pregnant. Um, so uh, y y this is what, what you have a party saying, we want to change essentially what the country is. How does that man, how does that happen in a state, in a democracy? Usually if a state changes entirely, if it goes from being, let's say, Soviet Russia to, to, to Putin's Russia, it, it requires some sort of huge dismantling, a revolution or a, 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 a dismantling and a rebuilding thing such as it is. Or is, it, is democracy something that exists within a, continu a continual, the, the way the nation shifts slowly and inexorably? There are slight changes made by each, each generation that comes in to... to um, administer. Anyway, all of this has got nothing to do with my sense of democracy. My sense of democracy is, um, is what is called sortition. 
And essentially, it makes of all of us a political animal. Um, there are no elections. There are periodic. You you would, as a member of a community where you live in your in your um, township, you would be uh, uh, lots would be drawn and you would be selected, but on the basis on a random basis to <laughs> have basically, I guess, um, um, senatorial duties. You'd become an assemblyman for a certain period of time, a year or something like that, and you would get together and um, talk and, and, and get a consensus on what your particular community asks of the state. You actually become the state, in a sense. All of us do. Um, it's a way of doing it. It's, 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 it's a way around what democ democracy essentially means which is um which is that we all talk about everything we discuss everything um neither is going to happen sortition nor nor direct democracy but but what i think is 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 a thing that should be emphasized is participation and i think it's um it works very well for people to realize or to acknowledge that they are part of a community um, and to engage with it, participate in it, speak to it, learn how to speak to it. It always makes me laugh when, some, as a stage actor, someone said that um, many, most people fear public speaking more than death, <coughs> which would have left you in big trouble in, in ancient Athens. Um, but I think that one of the functions of social media is people slowly learning, not only that it's their right, but learning how to speak their minds and speaking your mind in a sense is its own virtue. If you're living in a society where people say, well, let me have my say and their say, they are allowed to have their say. Um, and that's not just going into a, into a little room and and pushing some buttons and voting for somebody that's not having a say except in the most minimal sense so anyway that's just the the thing i don't know what we do with it you know I, either because as as trump and kamala will say this is a this is a capitalist society free enterprise however you want to dress it up and that's marvelous it's simply marvelous, but it's not something that lends itself towards democracy. It lends itself to some people being <clears throat> wealthier than others, being more powerful than others, um, um, unequal. And, uh, and again, that's fine. It just needs to be said. And if it creates problems, they need to be addressed. It's like, you know, right now, Barack Obama can say what he wants. Barack Obama is not in my position. My position is a very good one. Um, you know, I don't live in several gated communities. I don't have people driving me everywhere. I don't have all the money God needs to, to get any kind of a lawyer. I don't have access to all kinds of medical procedures that he does simply because he's rich and famous. Um that's the, that's how we live and and it's the um negotiating the that difference in power that difference in in power and claiming to be uh a democracy that's difficult to balance and it's worth looking at because either you create a much greater, I'm not talking about total equality, but you create a much greater equality of income, particularly, and power, <coughs> and, and, and platforms where people can, can speak. It's interesting now that <coughs> somebody will say, well, you know, I've got to run a political campaign and, you know, all the thing that that, that, all, all that, that costs. And I thought, well, there's lots of people that I... Uh, follow and encounter on YouTube for nothing, by the way, 
and I see them much more uh, intimately and much more in depth than I ever would if I could go to a rally every four years or something like that or, 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 or watch them on, on an expensively produced television show. So even that notion of political power being exorbitantly expensive and, and unreachable by most of us is fast disappearing. Um, you know, Brianna Joy Gray for president every day of the week. Um, and, you know, she's probably earning a modest income, putting out the marvelous work that she does. And she's, she's now a very public figure and a very significant figure for some of us, all because of the dreaded internet. All right, that's it so far.